Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. This is going to be a continuation of my updated in-depth guide series. This time we're on to water. As per usual, you will find timestamps to each relevant section of the guide in the pinned comment and as well as the description of the video. So if you want to skip to a relevant section in terms of AOE, single target, prec, might, etc., you can find those timestamps there and it'll take you directly to that section. As well, I uh, will have my uh, older guide linked in the description as well, just in case you want to see that. Uh, I will mention that the healing section for water healing, I will be linking to my specific uh, water healer guide that I did cover. So just look for that in the timestamp as well as the description as well. And that will take you to a separate video where it goes into much greater detail with all the minor, f finer points of water healing. So it's much more detail than I would include normally in a, a typical guide. So... Let's get into it. Okay, so taking a look at the uh, Might DPS spec, it's what you'd uh, expect for a typical one. So it's going to be super powered spec, critical attack chance maxed out, critical attack damage, everything else into Might and Power, Iconic Powers. Heat vision, I mean, that's just if you're using like a universal build, uh, since this is AoE, but you're going to eventually need to take heat vision, robot psychic, uh, neo venom boost, freezing breath if you want to do a mix up range. Sewer speed, you just need the innates. Uh, you can take dervish as well. I don't use dervish in my rotations for water, but uh, you certainly can substitute dervish if you prefer it. A weapon, you just need anything with a, a nice lunge. I prefer one handed. And then everything else you're putting into health. And then I should mention again, a lot of people say, oh, you should put in a prec for your weapon taps. I can't tell you, I mean, every single raid I run, uh, I know the DPS are mostly, since well, it's prec DPS, so they're specking prec and might. They're not putting anything to health, or there's might DPS putting the thing to prec because they, they want their weapon taps to be like a couple thousand higher, if, even if that. Any kind of situation where... There's, a, there's an attack, they die, and I survive. Perfect example would be, think of FOSS 2 in the bridge with those sentries. When they do their little like explosion pushback, everyone around me will die, I'll live. Why? Because I have much higher health than all of them. So would you rather have the weapon taps, or would you rather be dead not dealing any damage, and then I can just keep DPSing? Same thing. I mean, you saw it even in like uh, my uh, my previous video, which covered some of these rotations for water. Like people are dying on Bizarro, etc. Same thing. I, I'm surviving because of that health. So that's why I will always take survivability as a DPS over anything else, especially on a melee build. You could argue it for range because you're gonna, you're safe, but I will always tell you to spec health. That's my personal preference, and I routinely see it being. Because especially if you're running elite content, I mean regular, you're not going to die. But I mean any kind of elite content, that health is going to save you 9.9 .9 times out of 10. You're going to notice the difference running it. So that's why I do. Touching onto the gear, blast adapter in the weapon mod. Head mod is going to be supercharged. Call of the Deep Three. Uh, you could also run Neo Venom, just depending on your supercharge. Next going to be Escalating Might. Back mods has to be accelerated at bubble in terms of cooldown. Chest mod, penetrating strikes. Leg mods, doesn't matter. Utility belt, mother box is the best overall pet trinket right now. As long as it's a tier 3. DPS trinket, orbital supply. In terms of face mod, you want to make sure you have might. Hand mod, max damage. Foot mod, doesn't matter. But if you're not, if you're using dervish, if you want to substitute that, then you have to take uh, dashing combos. In terms of artifacts, uh, they'll be slightly different. I mean, Transtrat Grim is going to be the base damage, or the, sorry, not the base artifacts, because you need that crushing PI for all of water rotations. So Grim's great for setting that up. You can also substitute in Gemini. You can also substitute in, um, is it down here? I mean, you need Soul Line Profile for single target, obviously, but it's usually either Strat or Grim that gets replaced, depending on your setup. Augments. Adaptives are always going to be Might, and Origins are going to be Might as well. Okay, so with respect to a Water Melee build, 
Uh, I'm actually not using Dervish. Uh, I, I feel like, I mean, you can use Dervish with water. It's just, I feel like it's more awkward. You'd have to use, you'd have to start with Dervish and then you have to lunge in with uh, your weapon and then start Dervish and go through the rest of the rotation. You can't use Bubble, which I mean, it, not like Bubble's OP or anything like that, but I do like it for lower content. Even for Elite, it's just, it's nice to have the uh, something that's actually useful in terms of a shield that actually does something for you. I mean, plus at the same time, if you did want to kind of cheese it and do like the whole like, you know, I need to run, you know, multiple supercharges and uh, you can't really do that with a, a Dervish build where this one you can because you're just using three powers and you could drop bubble and robot sidekick for like new venom boost and whirlpool and like speed drain or whatever you wanted. So the, the reason why I like crashing wave as well is that, uh, I mean, you get that nice upfront damage and the teleport's kind of fun too. So say, say if I was using Dervish, and the ads are the tanks pulling those ads up. I'd have to lunge into the group of ads, then start Dervish. And then if, if one of the ads are blocking because of a DPS or the tank or whatever, then I'm gonna get knocked down from Dervish and get interrupted, or I run into the possibility where I'm not I'm target locked on something that's gonna die and it's gonna stop Dervish and just I mean it has its drawbacks. But with crashing wave, you know, if I max range, boom, I'm teleported in, I can start my damage rotation right away. It does set up the PI. So it's just, uh, I like Crashing Wave as a power. Um, I mean, yeah, sometimes you can teleport to like the wrong ad or something like that. You have to make sure you, you're targeted right. And then for Bubble, if you weren't sure what Bubble does, is it gives you three extra hits of damage. So one, two, and three. In the course of transformation card, they have the chance to crit. So it's always gonna be three. It doesn't matter if you're using like a power or just weapon taps, it's always gonna be three hits of extra damage. So it's it's free damage, plus you have a shield, which is always useful, especially for crashing wave, because you're gonna be melee based. So you have the extra protection of a clip, obviously, for depth charge. So you have a free clip of depth charge, you have a shield for survivability on melee, and then you have the extra damage. So that's why I prefer this uh, much better. In terms of supercharge, um, the way, if you watch my previous commentary, my FOSS 2 water commentary, uh, the reason why I run Call of Deep on melee instead of like say Neo Venom Boost is because I am starting a raid with full supercharge and then I can Call of Deep right away, get my Gemini. If you want to get really fancy, you could use Flute too because technically you don't need Grim because Crashing, PA, uh, crashing Wave is going to set your pattern action for crushing. So then you technically don't need that right away. So you could always pop in Gemini for that. And you could pop in like flute or something like that on for strategy card because you're going to be focusing on the call of deep damage. So if you want to maximize your call of deep damage, you'd have Gemini and flute, just like in the beginning of Foss 2. Uh, and then because I think watching well, the commentary, um, I didn't have flute in that run. I had flute in another run, but uh, um, I just didn't bother switching in because it wasn't like a serious run. It was just kind of a fun run. But if you want to be super tryhard, you basically do call of deep. Supply drop, trinket, Gemini for the, the EOG proc, and then flute for the extra the damage from the rats. So massive damage sets you off right away. Uh, and then basically as you continue on, like in FOS 2, you eventually get to a boss fight. Then you're about, you know, 50, 75% full. And at that point, you'd, uh, well, I'll show you with the single target rotation. But at that point, you're using, you're mixing in between dehydrate and new venom boost. So that's that's my thought process why I use Call of the Deep first. Uh, and still, it's an amazing supercharge. It's one of the strongest 100%ers in the game. Uh, it's just that you can use that, or you can use the whole, like, I'm going to use a bunch of crappy superchargers and spam Geminis and stuff like that. So you have that option, but I don't, I don't consider that actual DPSing. So after that, all of this is just crashing wave, even flow. So like I said before, even flow technically is a combo power. So if, say if I just hit Eeb, but if I do even flow or whatever, if I'm pronouncing E wrong or whatever, uh, people like to correct me on my pronunciation. So we got E and then flow kicks the water back. So just hit the power that pulls it towards you. And if you do the combo, it pushes it back. So just make sure you're doing that as well. And then obviously depth. The thing you have to remember with depth charge is that it is uh, directional. So say if I'm using depth charge, these two targets aren't going to get hit because I'm not looking at them. So it hits on a line. Same thing if I'm positioning this way. Now all those targets get hit. And if I'm looking like just here, just these three, maybe that one too, because it's a it kind of cone reaches out. So you have to watch your positioning. So it's the same thing if you're watching that video, just because I, I wanted to 
uh, show that rotation. I'm constantly moving the camera around because I know it's going to be situational and positioning with depth charge so that I'm just making sure I'm looking at uh, on a target that's going to get me the most hits. So that's just be something to aware of. It just fires essentially in a straight line. So just watch your positioning. And then you have robot psychic as well. So let's jump in and we'll show you the rotation. Let me uh, de-summon Psychic here. So the reason why I had to jump over to the House of Legends is that uh, my dominance is way too high for these sparring targets on the league halls. Uh, the sparring target dom cap is 1500 and the, in the House of Legends they raise them. So if I was doing even flow, even flow is a pull, depth charges is going to push them back and it's just a, it just, it's a hassle. Uh, I wouldn't be able to parse properly. So we'll do it in House of Legends for now. And then uh, hopefully those changes apply to the sparring targets and the calls as well. So jumping to water here, 1.3, 1.29, 1.29, 1.2, 1 1.28. So it's pretty much like almost 1.3 mil consistently. Uh, water is very consistent from that aspect in terms of its damage. Uh, so then you got, and like I said before, it's, it's nice in contact because you got the protection of bubble. You have to watch your positioning on depth charge. You got the nice teleport from crashing waves. So I mean, I could be... You know, as long as they're in red range, I'm teleported straight there, and I can start the, the combat. So it's nice. You don't really have to worry about, uh, you know, being in combat and, like, you know, double tapping as a super speed. To get uh, targets, you can just teleport straight to them, start your damage. Nice and handy. That one didn't work because it was just a little bit too far. So you can cover like a good like you know 25 meter radius just by teleporting and it's fun honestly it's just it's kind of fun i mean water you, you're not expecting too much from water anyway but uh, at least it's fun with crashing wave and like i said before i mean i've done plenty of of FOS 2 elites and FOS 2 regs with this rotation and i've done perfectly fine um it may not do well in some other content but like i said before water is kind of kind of pick your poison kind of power so but uh, I do personally prefer this over a Dervish rotation, that's for sure. Like I said before, I was talking about in the loadout section, uh, I'm hesitant to run Dervish with water. I don't feel it's necessary. And like I said before, at the same time, um, I don't think I have... Let me see. I, don't, I think I had a skill point uh, free. Yeah, I do. Okay, good. So for those you know, gem spam loadout rotations, you can just drop Bubble and Psychic. And then call it deep because it's going to be too expensive. And then you're just running Neo Venom, Whirlpool, and then Speed Drain. And at that point, you can take off Crashing Wave because you already have the power interaction set up from um, Crashing Wave. So now, oh, it didn't work because it was in combat. Whoops. 
<laughs> now Mortal Kombat. So now you can use new event boost, whirlpool, speed drain, have your eye of the Gemini on. You could even drop strategy card too if, if things are dying quickly. And then basically now you have, you, you know, you still have just as strong as a rotation. All you're doing is missing bubble. So you're still going to be probably like, you know, 1.1 or even 1.2s. Let's see what the next one's going to be. I was a little over there, but I was, wasn't paying full attention to the rotation. But like I said before, you're going to be over a million. Just under 1.2, but then you got the three superchargers for the Gemini procs. So that's how you'd have to play it. If you're in a gem span group, then that's the type of rotation you're going to expect. You're just dropping Psychic. You'll lose that passive damage. You're dropping Gemini or dropping uh, Grim, which you're losing the passive damage from that too. And then making up for it with all the Gemini procs. So that's why the rotation is going to parse much less because you're missing all that passive damage. But you're making up for it because you're just, you know, spamming supercharges off cooldown, essentially. So that's that's how you handle those groups if you're going to be in them as water. All you're doing is just running three abilities and then three supercharges. Okay, so with water, might, single target... Uh, I do treat it a little bit differently because, I mean, water's like greatest weakness is actually one of his greatest strengths. So dehydrate is an obscenely powerful supercharge. It hits in pure single target. However, it drains your full supercharge bar and doesn't proc uh, the Gemini. So you can see where that's an issue. I mean, you can't go out spamming dehydrate when everyone else is spamming Gemini procs and you're losing damage. So it's kind of like altering between the both. So I would say... I, like I've run this a lot in groups. I've run in groups where it's like massive gem span. I've run in groups where it's like one healer that's using Gemini's. I'm being groups where it's running no supercharge. And I'll tell you right away that uh, in those groups with like the massive gem spam, where it's like you know multiple healers running all three supercharges, dehydrates pointless. <laughs> you're just you're losing way too much damage at that point. You're just better off just running because uh, i mean the issue with new event boost is like yeah it's a good supercharge but water single target's not really like the greatest anyways so new event boost when dehydrate crits for like 500k 800k a million whatever you're not getting that much damage from the event boost a, a new event boosted water single target rotation is not going to net you like 500k damage on single target it's just not where dehydrate will so in those massive gen span groups, you're kind of stuck. I mean, you're with the cooldown of Neo Venom boost, unless you're running like Whirlpool or something else just to proc Gemini circles. And then, then you could drop like Dehydrate as well. In those groups where you get like one healer doing it, that's actually the perfect setup. If it's actually just one healer doing Gemini, because you're earning just enough to earn Neo Venom boost, but you're also having about 35, 40% supercharge left over, which is perfect for Dehydrate. Uh, which I'll show in the example there. Uh, you just have to dehydrate. You don't have to have your full supercharge full. I mean, it hits uh, almost just as hard in terms of it being at like 35%, just over the 25 even. So uh, it's more situational. I, like if it's a pure single target fight, dehydrate all the way. Uh, you'll be doing much more damage with Dehydrate than you would with uh, Neo Venom Boost. If it's a, a fight with adds, where there's a boss and, and adds in the fight, then yeah, Neo Venom Boost will win out over that. And on that, you just have Heat Vision, Eeb, and Torrent. In terms of Artipacks, you're going to need Soul Amplifier. You're going to need uh, Grim for the uh, Eeb setup. Sorry, let me go back to my loadout. You need the Crushing PI for this, for Eeb. And then Transformation Card. Not that like Strategy Card would be any better in this because you're not really having a lot of dots anyway. So... Let's uh, show you the rotation, and then I'll also uh, show you a clip of how to use Dehydrate properly. Oh, well, actually, I can mention, um, you kind of already seen it, but, I mean, your allies, you choose between Cyborg and House of Legends, because, I mean, there's no allies that are going to be really helpful that for water. 
uh, single target or, or AOE or healing. Well, because I mean, there's no stuns. So, I mean, House of Legends bots there just for consistent single target damage. Cyborg has the greater potential for damage, but it can be a little awkward depending how the tank positions the adds. It can miss the projectiles. Uh, House of Legends bot is much more consistent unless it gets stunned. So, I mean, it's it's nothing perfect. And, and there's really third one. There's like nothing even like even more remotely helpful. I mean, unless you're spending like 200 bucks on Wonder Woman or something like that for her like might passive, which is only six seconds and po quite pointless. <laughs> So, let's show you the rotations here. Okay, so you get the idea there. Once again, I'm in House of Legends because the sparring targets have a higher dom cap. So once I get to move back to League Halls, then I'll go back there. But in terms of water single target, the, the easiest way I could describe water single target is like imagine electric without circuit breaker. So electric base damage single target is like really low, but circuit breaker makes up for that because the, you know, the 55% damage increase, 12 second cooldown, Gemini all that kind of stuff. Uh, but water doesn't have that. Water has dehydrate. And then dehydrate is kind of counterproductive in those gem span groups, like I said before, because you don't have anything to proc Gemini. So, you know, for something, a situation like this, you know, if you get a nice, like, dehydrate crit, I mean, boom, that was a million damage right there. I mean, yes, that was a full supercharged bar, but, you know, just, just imagine, you know, it, it took, what, 20 seconds for me to deal a million damage, but in here I did it in, like, one power. So like I said before, I mean, it's just Dehydrate has the ability to do really well as a single target supercharge. Uh, you just have to work it into the rotation. Because if I, if I hit it like normally, then it's, yeah, it's much lower. But then you work it up to, which I'll show in my Dehydrate example, if you saw that clip on the guide, then it just depends where your supercharge bar is at. But like I said before, I mean, it's not, I mean, it is terrible. I mean, when you, when you, when like a gadgets prec sees this and sees like 56 K, like, Oh, I was hitting 56 K like two years ago as gadgets prec, but it's like, yeah, well, we all can't be gadgets prec, but, uh, that was just more fluke. I mean, that was 24% crit chance. That's ridiculous. Uh, but you know, 69, 71, 67, 74, 67, 65. So it's like mid to high sixties, uh, where plenty of chances you can get seventies. Because, I mean, that's 70, that was a 32%, that was 32%. So, I mean, 32% crit rate is not unreasonable. It's not like a 40 or something that would be an outlier. That's, you know, 28, 28, that was all standard. So, it's just a few percentage points higher. So, the base damage for water, single target, I mean, nothing to write home about. But when you're mixing in dehydrate, then you have the possibility to actually do well in single target damage. just depends on the situation. Okay, so for water AOE ranged, we're kind of going back, I wouldn't say to basics, but kind of going back to water's roots with using a high tide rotation. So depth charge, 
one of the water's best abilities for damage, max range, AoE. Uh, not the best on single target, but that's why we're using a ranged AoE. Uh, high Tide is basically, the reason why we're using High Tide is to set up the dot for Aqualance. So Aqualance, if you don't use it, it's just a burst damage, uh, where if, you ha or if you're in High Tide, it'll set up a dot. And the nice thing about that is it's about a seven second dot, even though Aqualance is a six second cooldown. Uh, the nice thing about that as well, you get the transformation card procs and the strategy card procs on the Aqualance dot as well. Uh, shark Frenzy is kind of negated. I mean, you use Shark Frenzy in high tide, it, it crits, but I mean, it could also crit with transformation cards. I mean, what's the point? You're kind of just wasting a power at that point. And then if you, so I can show you here. So just if you aren't aware, you're using high tide, Aqualance then becomes a dot. And the dot's actually not that bad at all. And then if you were just using it regularly, just burst. And then of course uh, the, the damage from the dot would have been a little bit less because Aqualance is off based off the Crush PI, which is what Grim sets up, and I didn't have Grim out that time. But uh, the uh, Depth Charge and Aqualance is going to be dealing off Crush PI. And then when you're in High Tide, then you'd be using Tsunami Strikes to lower it. So each time you use Tsunami Strikes, it lowers the cooldown by 4 seconds. So, uh, Cooldown wise, you'll see in the rotation, I can clip Depth Charge every other time because the Tsunami Strike's in the rotation. And then uh, Artifacts, Grim, Strategist Card, Transmission Card. I mean, allies, you're going to be having Cyborg for this. It'll depend on the positioning of the tank, but Cyborg is still going to be the best for AoE in this. I mean, the second best is Flashpoint Batman, but I mean, that's 200 bucks to max that out, so. That's not always practical. So let's show you what the rotation looks like so you can uh, follow along what I was saying. Okay, so you get the idea there. Sorry, I had to use Aqualance at the end. Didn't need the high-pitched sound from High Tide for my entire conversation. Uh, so is it? So obviously the first parts are going to be a little bit lower, million just because, or almost 1.1, just because you have no strat, literally no strategy card procs for that 10 seconds. Uh, 1.3, 2, 4, 1.2, 1.45, 1.5 mil. So it gets into more of a consistent rotation there. Hit counts are all pretty similar. 75 or 74, 79, 73, um, 289 there. Had some extra procs there. 267. So you have better crit chance there. 44 versus the 42, 43s. So, I mean, nothing crazy, but uh, certainly very competitive in terms of AOE damage. Plus, you've got uh, Neon Venom as a clip there. So, that is Water AOE. So I wanted to have a, a little separate section for Dehydrate. Uh, you saw me use that in my Might Single Target rotation or uh, Might Single Target footage because it's, it's situational and 
it's a little bit of shame because it's one of the best abilities for water for pure single target. I mean, it's probably the best pure single target supercharge in the game. But the disadvantage is that it's a supercharge, but it doesn't actually proc a supercharge like proc guy the Gemini. Uh, so you a little bit of issue with that. I mean, technically, you could pop like Neo Venom Boost or like Speed Drain, like another supercharge, and then use Dehydrate. And then, yeah, the Dehydrate damage would count towards either Gemini, but Dehydrate itself won't proc that. And it uses all your supercharge. So the other issue with that is that uh, it says it's supposed to use 100% supercharge, but it doesn't. So if you have like Scrap the Soul Cloak or anything that extends it, uh, it's going to use everything but stop at 10,000 uh, supercharge worth of damage. So, for example, we're using it uh, like full. Was that a base damage? Like there was like 400k base damage at at uh, 100,000. We'll see if we can get a crit going. So then, easy crit for a mill. And that's not like ending in content in terms of like a tetra buff or anything. So that's, I mean, that's easily through the roof. But the other thing is that say if we use. So we're gonna use flood of power. And then we'll also use metabolic boost. So technically we've got 2,500. And what I'll do is we'll extend it um, just beyond 2,500 in terms of supercharge. We'll get up to about 30%. So we'll, use, we'll do one more time here. And just have a drown statement stop. So then now if we use Dehydrate, even if you use it just a bit off 2,500, I mean, that was still a non-crit of 170k. So it would be nice to actually show you. <laughs> it would be nice if it actually cooperates with the uh, footage and actually is a crit. So we'll try that again. And Malabar Boost. So now we've only got 2,500 left. And even at 2,500, that's a crit for 400k. So even so even at 2500 supercharge that crit for 400k. So imagine like speed drain or like bloom or any any of those 2500 supercharges you're not going to get 400k damage from that. I mean let me just uh we'll give my right, supercharge back here and then we'll pop like uh no we'll put speed drain on. Just so you can see both. So speed drain in terms of like a it's a 2500 supercharge. You'd be able to compare that with the 400k damage from one crit of dehydrate. So you got 124k from speed drain on single target and 400k from dehydrate from the same amount of supercharge you used. So yes, you could argue that uh, I, the Gemini, you're going to have procs with uh, speed drain. But at the same time, if you're in some kind of massive gem span group, like I said in the earlier in the video, dehydrate's not going to be beneficial because if you've got that many Geminis, then all the other DPS are getting those, you know, Gemini Pollux gaze procs off you. So then you've got nothing to proc on dehydrate. Just it's not going to work in that kind of situation. It works best in situations where there's there's not a ton of supercharge regen. You could have one healer using a supercharge. That's perfect because you'll still get Neo Venom. But then after that, like say. Say um, we'll go back up to full here, and we'll use uh, this flood of power just so I can get down to fifty percent, and then we'll use dehydrate at fifty. So of course it doesn't crit, but at least it gives it yeah, base damage of like those like two hundred sixty k base damage. So let's try that one more time. See if we can show a crit at fifty. So six hundred k. So. So even even with Neo, that's the thing with the rotation and pure single target, one Neo Venom boost is not going to get you 600k damage as water. Water single target is just not strong enough that a Neo Venom boost, which is going to be the 40% damage buff for 12 uh, 12 seconds. I think it's under 12 seconds. I don't know, my my memory's foggy at the moment on that. Actually, I should be able to. Does it show in the current effects tab? 15 seconds. So 40% for 15 seconds. So even if you're doing that 15 seconds in that water rotation, that's not going to net you an increase of 600k damage. It will if there's multiple targets, but we're talking about piercing a target. So if you get that crit off at the same time, it's all situational, but if you get that crit off with dehydrate, that's 600k damage instantly. 
So that's why it's nice for like even like uh, like the way I look at this is like meta avatar meta. So final boss of uh, Foss to Elite, it's pure single target. There's no ads. You've got uh, other issues with him walking away. Uh, even Jarell, like if the if the tank is pulling all the ads away from Jarell, Jarell is a pure single target fight. You're not going to hit the sentries. So at that point, you've got a pure single target fight. And even a boost, Jarell could like uh, slam the ground. So he had the block. He could he could run away towards the tank because the tank's on the other side with the sentries. So there's plenty of opportunities. Meta could do his ball attack where you have to block or dodge. So there's plenty of times where you're not going to be able to get like a full 15 seconds worth of damage increase from Neo Venom Boost uh, because you have to block, move around, roll, whatever. Uh, but with Dehydrate, boom, instantly. That is 600k within that you know fraction of a second worth of damage that you can get. So like I said, it's situational, but Dehydrate is not something to be overlooked. It is incredibly powerful, even not being used at 100%. So yeah, everyone thinks you have to use Dehydrate at 100% to get that you know 1 mil damage. But if you're in a, a good enough Gemini group to get that 2,500 spam, so if you get 2,500 crits for 400k, get another 2,500. That's another 400k. So now you're at 800k. So you're at 800k damage and you've only used 50, uh, 5,000 supercharge. Or you get, um, like Neon Venom Boost, you get a 50%, boom, 600k crit. And then again in content, another 600k. Now you're at 1.2 mil. So it, it all depends on the situation, but Dehydrate is certainly not something you've overlooked. Uh, a lot of people do because they think it has to be used at that 100%. But as long as you're using it over the 2,500 cap, so like even 3,000, I mean, it's not. it just has to be a little bit over the 2,500 cap, then you're looking at the massive crits. So... I, it, it, this was more like as like an FYI, basically, or or like a, you know something you know today I learned TIL. So it's just something to take away that it, it is very beneficial to have dehydrate for the right situation on your loadout, especially for single target might because it's massive damage. As long as you get the crit, but I mean you're gonna have transformation cards, so it's it's not gonna be too much of an issue with the crit. And even if it doesn't crit, you're still doing a massive single target worth of damage. So. There's a takeaway for the video. Okay, so on to the uh, prison side of the guide. We're looking at weapons expert, critical attack chance, critical attack damage, maxing precision. Uh, because of my extra skill points, I'm not going to max out might. That wouldn't be realistic. I'm only specking about 370, 380 skill points here. Iconic powers, you don't need lasso. I'm not sure why that was back to, um, You just need robot psychic and you venom boost. Super speed, the uh, innates do help, but uh, once again, if you want to save the, five, the skill points, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, super speed in general, water precision uh, benefits from it. It's not 100% required, but phase dodge and dervish are certainly handy for uh, single target and AoE, but in they're not required, so don't worry about it. Uh, there are workarounds for that. But if you are super speed, you'd be taking phase dodge, dervish, and then speed drain just in case you need it for gem spam, but well, not required. Weapons, AoE is always going to be brawling, and you're taking true constore mastery. So we max out brawling tree, you max out the martial arts tree. For a single target, you'll be maxing out bow. And you'll be maxing out dual wield, taking dual third shot mastery and explosive shot mastery. And then after that, you would put the rest of your skill points into Might and Power. Weapon mods, always going to be Blast Adapter. Head mod, you got a couple choices. Critical Pressurize 3, so you get the extra criticals. Uh, or you got Supercharged Neo Venom Boost. Usually be, you'd be earning Neo Venom Boost regardless because of the longer cooldown on it, so it's not as important. Neck mod's going to be Relentless Precision. Back mod is going to be Accelerated Bubble. There is an Accelerated Pressurized mod, but it's just not as beneficial. The, the cooldown lines up better with 12 seconds anyway. Chest mod, Penetrating Strikes. Leg mods doesn't matter. Nothing scales. Foot mod, once again, it's your choice, but Tumbling Mastery. Hand mod is going to be Max Damage. Face mod, you'd have uh, Prec. In terms of Utility Belt, Mother Box, Father Box. Mother Box technically is the highest. I uh, don't think I have that one, no. On test server, but mother box is the highest damage, highest overall for single target and AoE. And then orbital, spy drop, and just trinket. In terms of artifacts, you're going to have the standard setup of transformation card, strategy card, and grim. 
and then you want to have ideally you want to have uh, eye of the gemini to be able to swap into those rotations when you need it so that's the four you should have uh, you'd be you'd be losing you'd be giving up a lot of damage if you didn't have gemini as pretty much any power set at the moment you know whether we like it or not turns of augments uh currently episode 41 house legend doesn't have any adaptive augments so you'd just be using the speed force ones from flashpoint or if you're uh, lower level than whatever current dlc you're on those will change over time and then your origin augments are always going to be precision as well uh, in terms of affinity mods precision and in terms of allies really there's no Besides Batman, there's no ally that specifically is beneficial for precision players. I mean, I'm not going to tell you to spend 200 bucks on Batman just so you get a heal when you use your precision. I mean, it doesn't help you at all. It just gives you a little bit more survivability. But, I mean, at the same time, you could also have, like, a calculator bot, which gives you some health as well. Not as much as Batman, but, I mean, one's $200, one is, like, $15, if that, 10 maybe. The rares are super cheap. You'd have it by free, technically, because you could level it just from the uh, Daily Log Rewards. I mean, damage-wise, you want Cyborg or you want House of Legends. House of Legends is the more consistent, especially on boss damage. And then Cyborg is more positional, but it's, it's the highest overall uh, potential. But, I mean, House of Legends, once again, is a rare, so it's super cheap. So you should really have both, regardless. Other than that, the third one, there's, there's honestly no third one. You can have Calculator Bot, you have Oracle Bot if you want repairs. Like, there is no specific you have to have these allies set up because right now allies uh is kind of a broken system as as the watching of this video so there's nothing really that crucial with allies just have either cyborg or house of legends other than that really it's it's completely dependent on how much you want to spend but even that there's still bro uh, broken abilities untuned abilities so it's just leave just get your damage ally up and and don't really worry about the passes at the moment Especially for water prec. I mean, it just, it's not going to burn through that much power, so you don't need Cyborg's passive. So, let's touch on the Lorets. So, for water precision, uh, you actually have the same loadout, regardless if it's single target or AoE. Um... You do have some variations. So like I said before, if, if you want to go like pure uh, super speed, you would clip with the uh, phase dodge, so depth charge, pressurize phase dodge, and then do like the dervish clip alternating with depth charge, so every three seconds, three seconds. Uh, that is a possibility to you as well. There's some situations where you can drop psychic and take like whirlpool and the boost or speed drain and um, and the boost, depending if, like, uh, if you're doing like EOG spam. At the same time, you can also drop phase dodge for a bubble. So you get the three extra hits of bubble. Use bubble as a clip. And the same thing, double supercharge or have robot sidekick. Uh, if you don't have dervish, then you're pretty much just doing like a build like this. Because there's, there's no really substitute to dervish on water or with the other movement modes. So you just be clipping with bubble, have robot sidekick. And then you'd have uh, two superchargers just for a Gemini spam. So that's that's what you do if you if you were flight or acrobatics. But uh, ideally, you're going to want either phase dodge or you're going to want to keep dervish. So for purposes of this video, I just won't show phase dodge because at least at least with bubble, yeah, phase dodge saves you some time. But at least with bubble, you get the protection as well as you get a little bit extra damage as well. With the three hits of might damage. So it'll be lower for me because I have nothing spec, but could be higher for you if you have more might spec. But yeah, for a single target AoE, the only thing that's going to change is the weapon. Other than that, the loadout is the exact same for AoE and single target. So let's show you the actual rotations.
Okay, so you get the idea there, quite standard. Uh, first parser is going to be a little bit low because it's obviously 10 seconds and it doesn't account for any of the strategy card procs. And then we get into a little bit more normal, I guess you could say, with the strategy card procs and hit counts. So obviously the higher parsers are going to have uh, most hits, 1.38, 1.33, 234, 248, 234, 247, then you run crit percentages. So quite standard I guess for, for Prec AOE or at least for like the, a non top tier Prec AOE then you're looking at like 1.3 mil so obviously if I was melee and hitting with Dervish you're going to get more damage but that's not always realistic you're going to be sitting back farther out of range of Dervish so obviously if I was close then obviously you could you know get that Dervish tick damage as well but that's going to be completely situational depending on the ads Okay, so you get the idea there. Flurry shotting is flurry shotting. Well, except when I do it. Uh, there we go. You piss off for about psychic. So 60s to 70s when I was doing it properly. Had a nice one at 90. Then down to 70s. Really bad one at 50. So, I mean, you can tell with my hit counts. I mean, when I'm in the mid 50s, I'm perfectly fine. Uh, that was just the difference in crits. 16% crit difference but all the max hits were pretty much the same. So when I was doing it properly <laughs> and you were sitting at like, you know, 55, 56 hits, then you're consistently doing well. So, you know, that was 73, that was 69, that was a 90, that was 67. So you're, you're always, I mean, water single target is going to be water single target with Preck uh, because you're, the only advantage is that uh, like every third or fourth rotation you can clip bubble. Um, I mean, other than that, you'd be doing the same thing with phase dodge, but you get, I mean, you get an extra three hits of damage, uh, at least. So, I mean, it'd be cleaner with, this would certainly be cleaner with phase dodge. I mean, AOE with brawling, um, bubble actually would win out there in terms of easy use because, um, clipping brawling or, or, uh, weapon canceling brawling with the phase dodge isn't as fast as single, th as dual is, where it's pretty much instant. So then it certainly would be cleaner with phase dodge, but I mean you get uh, an extra three hits of damage. So I mean that's your that's your choice if you're if you're so used to doing with prey phase dodge, perfectly reasonable. Uh, or if you want a little bit of shield and a little bit extra ticks of damage, you can use bubble. But other than that, it's going to be the exact same. And then dropping like sidekick for like whirlpool or something like that, or speed drain depending on the situation in terms of uh, Gemini spam. But uh, that's what to expect with water. Pretty much your standard uh, single target for precision. <laughs> 